Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where it's another very wonderful autumn day here at the park. It's been really cold here the last uh, week or so but not cold enough to kill off the mosquitoes. Uh, there's still quite a few of them buzzing around me so if you uh, see me like waving my hands around and slapping myself it's not because I'm going crazy it's because uh, mosquitoes are attacking me trying to get uh, I guess a last minute meal before the winter comes. Uh, it's very beautiful here at the park. Uh, the autumn leaves are really wonderful, uh, beautiful to look at. Rather quiet day here at the park because it's a weekday. Uh, kids are still in school and working people are still at work. So most of the people here at the park are mothers with young children, retired people coming out to take a, a wonderful stroll on a beautiful day. And people like myself coming out to make a video, though I think I'm the only person here making a camera video today. Anyway. Uh, subject of today's video is going to be about another Nikon camera. Uh, for people in Europe, you might call it Nikon, and for people here in Japan, they call it Nikon. But since I'm an American, more or less, I'll go ahead and call it Nikon. So, because uh, I always get comments in the section below uh, asking why I pronounce a, a camera maker's name in a particular way, and yeah, there are different ways of saying it. But uh, for to say for the purposes of this video, this is a Nikon camera, not a Nikon or a Nikon. Anyway. Subject of today's video is a Nikon EM SLR camera, which was introduced by Nikon way back in 1979. For those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I have an Etsy store, which is also called Japan Vintage Camera, so if you'd like to buy this Nikon camera or another uh, vintage Japanese camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So way, way, way back in 1979, uh, which was a really good year. I remember uh, uh, Led Zeppelin and Kiss and uh, lots of other cool stuff from that time. I'm old enough to remember 1979. Nikon, Nikon, Nikon was probably that, or no, probably about it. They were uh, the top maker of professional photography equipment at the time. Uh, news, news photographers, military photographers, serious amateur photographers, National Geographic, all of them used Nikon bodies and Nikon lenses. And uh, for good reason. Uh, Nikon equipment was reliable, well-made, uh, superb optics. It was, uh, it was just, it, it was the standard by which others were, were measured. But uh, because of the high standards of, of the equipment, the camera bodies and lenses, they had very high prices. And Nikon hoped to be able to increase their market share or their share of the photography market by uh, introducing a more mass market camera. If you think about it, uh, the number of professional photographers in the world is very, very small. Uh, the number of people who want to be professional photographers is a little bit larger, but not huge. Uh, the market for serious amateurs, there's quite a few of those. And then there are just pretty much everyone else, and that's, that's a lot of people. And so Nikon was hoping to make a camera which would appeal to a lot of people and be within the budget of a lot of people and the Nikon EM was the result. Uh, the Nikon EM was a much less expensively made, much more <coughs> simply made with less features than Nikon's other cameras, but it was still a quite a well-made camera and very easy to use. And uh, along with the camera, Nikon introduced a number of inexpensive E-series lenses in popular focal lengths, uh, a couple of uh, prime lenses and a couple of zoom lenses. And those, these were quite, uh, uh, I guess, low standard, at least uh, uh, from a marketing standpoint. It turns out that some of these lenses were really good performers. And a lot of people uh, seek out certain versions of the E-series lenses for their optical quality. For myself, I've never shot with an E-series lens, so I can't really, uh, uh, I guess, uh, give a, a, an informed opinion about them. But if anyone out there is a lover of E-series lenses, uh, feel free to post uh, something about your experience in the comment section below. So, uh, the EM, uh, some of the things which made the EM kind of uh, very un-Nikon-like was first the, the use of plastic on the outside of the camera. The EM uses polycarbonate plastic on the top and bottom covers, very much like uh, Canon was using in those days in its A, -A series of cameras, uh, which was being uh, picked up by other makers at the time. Eventually, Pentax Minolta and others would also use uh, polycarbonate, and today, pretty much every camera manufacturer uses some sort of plastic around the outside of the camera. 
you can say that uh, you know the the Canon and uh, Nikon EM were kind of pioneers in the in the plastic SLR camera, uh, I guess, development. Uh, yeah, it, it has a good feel. It's lighter than a regular Nikon. It doesn't quite have that the shutter smoothness that you find on say FM FE or especially the F3 with with its ball bearing system for the uh, the winding lever but uh, quite smooth enough to use and better than what I find on some uh, I guess comparable cameras or the competition which was made for the EM back in those days overall a really good camera and uh, and perfectly suited for those people who Nikon intended to sell this camera to back in 1979. And that are people who were looking for a very easy to use, very high quality uh, camera at a very reasonable price. Let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, functions, and all that stuff on the Nikon EM starting at the top here. We have over here the very typical uh, Nikon rewind lever with a or knob with a pop-out lever with a roller tip. Makes it very easy to rewind the film. A cool feature which I like about the EM is this very simple system of lifting this part open to open the door. Some of the more high-end cameras added a safety latch here to prevent you from accidentally opening the film door. Uh, this was done away with uh, on the Nikon F3P when it was kind of discovered that it was more of a hindrance than a help and you were more likely to not close the door all the way properly than you were to accidentally open the door. So uh, the Nikon EM, I love it because it doesn't have this uh, as this improvement or improved feature. Uh, below that we have the dial which you use to set the uh, film speed. So when you buy film you have to look at what speed film you have, say 200 or 400 ISO or ASA, and then you would simply lift this up and turn this white dot until the numbers match what you are loading into the camera. Very simple. On the top here we have a shoe for mounting a flash gun. Uh, this camera could give you automatic flop operation if you are using a a dedicated Nikon flash, uh, but you can use uh, any later strobe flash. Just follow the directions on your flash if you happen to be operating one or using one. Over on this side here, we have the main controls on the top of the camera. The first thing we have is a little red light here and this silver button, and this is a battery check lamp. And maybe you can see the battery in this camera. A little bit low, but it's still working. Next to that, we have the film winding and shutter charging lever. A very simple and quite a bit different design being the other Nikon cameras. I kind of like the way it pops out like that without you know moving the whole lever to pop it out. And the shutter release in this camera is quite smooth and the shutter is quite quiet, very much like the Olympus OM series. Uh, on the top here with the shutter buttons, uh, which accepts a standard cable release, so you can use a uh, uh, old mechanical self timer if you don't want to use the built-in one uh, you know, the, and a variety of different mechanical releases uh, of different types. I really like using these for landscapes or when I'm shooting at night or things like that. Very, very convenient and a kind of a, a must-have for like tripod photography and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, over here we have the, a three-way selector switch and this operates the shutter. And we have three different shuttings, sh shutter settings here. First we have B or bulb, so when you use the self-timer, and the old self-timers were actually a rubber bulb which used compressed air to push down uh, the, the shutter plunger. Uh, next we have M90, which is a manual shutter speed of 1 90th of a second, which allows you to use this camera if the battery happens to go dead and uh, sometimes we're in a place where the battery does go dead or the electronics stop working or whatever reason and uh, you're, you're stuck without being able to take photographs with uh, the Nikon EM. You do have this as a backup speed and at 1 90th a second will at least give you a little bit of a flexibility. You can still take photographs with the camera and fairly decent ones. Uh, the light meter won't work if the batteries are dead but uh, nowadays you can get uh, you can download free light meter apps for your smartphone so that makes it uh, possible to use this camera. If you find one where say the shutter isn't working you know or, uh, the electronic shutter isn't working but you can get the M90 setting to work you can at least use this camera and you know, and get some photographs out of it. And of course the last setting we have is auto setting and in the auto setting you have a, an, an aperture priority automatic system where you simply set the aperture uh, here with this uh, ring close to the body of the camera and the camera will automatically select the best shutter speed for that aperture. Uh, it's a very simple system, it works quite well and when you are looking through the viewfinder of the camera and you look on the left hand side you'll see a match, needer, a match needle system and as the light varies 
and as you vary the aperture, the position of the needle will move and it will show you which shutter speed the camera is selecting. And you can increase or decrease the shutter speed by simply increasing or decreasing the, the aperture. If you get to a really lo slow speed, say like, a, what is it, uh, on this particular one, 1 30th a second and below, uh, the numbers are red. So that warns you that you have to hold the camera extra st steady or you might get some blur to it. Very simple and easy to use system and requires you know, only a little bit of time to learn how to work. Uh, we, right next to that we have the film counter window and this camera will accept up to a 36 exposure roll of 35 millimeter film. On the front here we have this uh, button. This is the release button which allows you to remove and replace the lens. Uh, the good thing about the EM is it works perfectly well with all Nikon AIS manual focus lenses and you can also use AFD autofocus lenses. They don't focus automatically but you can set the aperture and focus these cameras manually and they'll work perfectly fine with this camera. Uh, when you take these cameras off, a good rule of thumb when you're putting the lens back on is just look at the aperture numbers here and the aperture numbers give you a point them over here toward the release button and that gives you an idea closely where you should be putting the lens back on. It makes it faster than trying to line up little dots and stuff like that. On this side over here we have a self timer lever which allows you to take the, the 1979 version of a selfie. On the bottom of the camera here we have um, this nice polycarbonate plastic cover which doesn't corrode or get to chewed up like the brass ones sometimes do. We have a couple of electrical contacts over here and these were made uh, for attaching the MD14 motor drive. Mechanical coupling is over here. So if you want to look like a professional photographer, but you know didn't want to spend the money for a professional camera system, you could just get the MD14 motor drive, stick it on here, and then you could sound like a, you know, a, a, like one of the sound effects from that old Duran Duran song, Girls on Film. Here we have the battery chamber cover, and this camera will accept a couple of uh, LR44 or SR44 batteries, which you can buy anywhere for next to nothing. We have a standard quarter-inch tripod socket here. Uh, stainless steel, nice nice quality for 1979. We have a release button here. This is what you use to uh, release the winding mechanism so you can rewind the film once you reach the end of the roll of film. <clears throat> On the back of the camera here, pretty much nothing at all other than the, the film card holder. Uh, most film still comes in little cardboard boxes. You rip off the top of the box and you can stick it inside here to remind you what kind of film you have. Up here we have the viewfinder eyepiece and it's kind of dovetailed on either side so you can either attach an eye cup or you can use uh, attach a diopter uh, adjustment lens. Uh, the eye cups tend to get catch on the film door when you open and close it so I kind of am annoyed by those and I don't use them. Uh, loading the film is quite simple. You lift up on the rewind knob, open the door like so. You can see the inside of the camera here. This one's in remarkable shape considering its age. It doesn't look like it's been used much or if it's been used at all. No, no wear marks at all here on the film pressure plate. Uh, the original light seals are still really nice. That's kind of a surprise when you consider the age of this camera. Anyway, uh, to load the film you make sure that this uh, uh, spool is pulled downward or the, the rewind knob is pulled downward. You drop your film canister here, push the uh, uh, button plunger back downward, the rewind uh, knob downward to hold the film spool in place. Pull the film leader, feed it into the slot on the take up sp uh, spool and simply uh, wind the film and uh, press the shutter until it's pulled all the way across and the holes on the top of the bottom of the film are being engaged by the teeth here on the take up sprocket. Then simply close the door and Fire the shutter until the number one shows up in the counter and the camera is good to go. Now, uh, overall these are a really good camera uh, today if you can find them in good condition. Uh, this one here looks like it was just used a little or hardly at all and just stored in a nice place and it's it's kind of endured the, the time really fine, still in, in good working condition. Uh, other ones sometimes are not in good working condition. Uh, common problems these cameras have are uh, bad electrical contacts which make it uh, difficult for the uh, shutter to operate properly or for the light meter to operate properly. You can sometimes clean off the contacts with a, an eraser and I also after using an eraser I'll use uh, a paint thinner or a lighter fluid on, uh, uh, on a cloth or a q-tip to clean off the residue from the eraser that, that helps to give better uh, contact. 
Uh, other issues, um, the light seals are always an issue in these old cameras. They can get dry rotted and get dust around the inside. So, uh, yeah. But other than that, uh, there isn't really much that can go wrong with these cameras. They were, despite their, their low cost and simplicity, they were quite well made cameras. And, and even today, they're, you know, uh, they're quite popular. For a long time, the value of these cameras kind of uh, disappeared and you could find them for like $10 or something like that. Uh, but uh, they've increased in value recently like a lot of the vintage uh, film equipment has. And uh, now they're getting uh, uh, fairly decent prices. And examples like this uh, it can be a little bit expensive nowadays, but of course less expensive than something like an FM or FE or much less than an F3. Anyway. Uh, that's it for my review about the Nikon uh, EM. Uh, this is one of uh, a large lot of cameras which I received today and I'll be listing these cameras uh, tomorrow and the next day. If you'd like to see what new stuff I have, uh, please check back tomorrow or the next day. Uh, I plan to be making more videos about more interesting cameras over the next week. If you'd like to see these, uh, please come back or subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.